Here you go. Yes. Normal test grade. Yes, five four to five five. Yep. No. 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 We ran out of time. I could. Okay. All right. Very good. Interesting. How do I give a one problem right or wrong test? It's either all right or all wrong. You don't like that idea, huh? One point backwards steady guy. Uh, first time ever that's been uttered. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. So in the example that you guys just saw, notice that what was really important was the inside. It was at two x, right? It was really changing what was happening on the ins on the outside. So therefore, what we need to do here is when we do substitution, we want to find the antiderivative of this. It looks impossible, doesn't it? Okay, thank you, Grace. I'm sorry I ever doubted us. What we have to do is we have to identify what u is. And most of the time when you identify what u is, most of the time it's whatever the inside would be if you were going to take the derivative and use the chain rule. So if I were going to take the derivative and use the chain rule, what would be the inside? 4 plus x cubed. Everybody okay so far? So therefore, the derivative of u, which is represented by du, that's the derivative of u, is going to be equal to, what's the derivative of 4 plus x cubed? 3, whoops, sorry. 3x squared dx. Now is where the substitution begins, and this is where you need to really lean in here, okay? I need to make sure that every part up here is replaced. I have a new variable, and because you identified a new variable, that being u, you can no longer have any x's. Everything must have a u in it instead, okay? So let's look at this. I have the integral, and I'm going to try to get rid of this guy, 4 plus x cubed to the fourth power. Anybody know what I put in the place of 4 plus x cubed to the 4th power? u to the 4th. See that? This is u to the 4th. Everybody good with that? I have two things left I need to get rid of. What are they? The 3x squared and? The dx. I wish that there was something that I could replace 3x squared dx with. Oh, du. Du is 3x squared dx, isn't it? So now I just need to know the antiderivative of u to the fourth. What is the antiderivative of u to the fourth? Why did you go over here? Did it come back? There you are. Okay. U to the fifth over five plus C. Everybody okay with that? No? Which part? So if I take the antiderivative, I increase the exponent by 1, I divide by the new exponent. What was u? Done. We're going to get to Tamara's question here, because Tamara asks an excellent, excellent, excellent question. Hey, Braden? Yeah. Exactly. An indefinite integral. <laughs> All right, we're going to pause here. That looks super complicated, right? The antiderivative of 7x times 4x squared minus 3 to the third power? Oh, my goodness. Well, 
I should identify what u is. What's u? 4 squared minus 3. What's du? 8x dx. You might not use substitution then. And I can't say that u is always what's in parentheses. Most of the time it is. No, no, no. It, excellent. This is why we wrote the problem. Thank you for asking the question. We do not simply look at what's left over. We look at the derivative of this. So this is the problem. In this one, in this one, when you took the derivative, you came up with exactly that. You don't come up with exactly that, do you? What are we going to do? I'll show you. This is the final answer right here. Done. No solving. That's all. That's it. Done. So if you notice here, what would go in place of 4x squared minus 3 cubed? What would go in that place? U cubed. Everybody agreed? But we have a problem. Here we have a 7x dx, but I have an 8x dx. So what I need to do is I need to create a 7x dx instead of an 8x dx. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to divide by 8. I get 1 eighth du is equal to x dx. Well, now I really don't have a 7x. What could I do? Multiply by 7. So 7 eighths du is equal to 7x dx. So you can play around with a constant if you want to. It's no big deal. So let's see what we have here. I have the integral. Instead of 4x squared minus 3 cubed, what do I put in that place? u cubed. And instead of 7x dx, what do I put in that place? 7 eighths du. Here's the deal, folks. It doesn't matter if the scalar, the multiplier, the constant, it doesn't matter if that thing goes on the outside of the integral or on the inside. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it on the outside and multiply it through when I'm done. I'd rather take the antiderivative of u to the third than the antiderivative of 7 eighths u to the third. Wouldn't you? So let's just do the antiderivative of u to the third. What's the antiderivative of u to the third? u fourth over 4 multiplied by? 7 eighths plus C. So I end up with 7 times what is U? 4x squared minus 3 to the fourth power over what? 32 plus a constant. A for the day, what does that even mean? What does it mean that this is the antiderivative of that thing? Area under the curve. Or if I took the derivative of this, I should get this guy right here, right? Well, think about it. Just, just think about it for a second. What's the derivative of the inside? An x, right? If you get 8x and you multiply it here, you get 8 over 32 is 1 over 4, right? So you get 7 over 4. Drop the 4 down, the 4 is going to go away. See how you end up with a 7x out there? And sure enough, we have the 7x right here. That's your introduction. We need to practice. Otherwise, things will fall apart. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube Nation. If I multiply by negative 4, what do I get? Negative 2 over the root of x dx. Is that almost what I need? Multiply by one third or divide by three, right? Does it now match? So let's look at what we're getting rid of, folks. We have the integral. And instead of cosine of the root of x, I'm going to have cosine of what? Cosine of u. So I, I even like to go back to the problem sometimes, mark the things I've gotten rid of. I got rid of that guy, didn't I? Instead of negative two thirds root of over or instead of negative two over three roots of x dx, what do I put in that place? 
Now you get 4 over 3 du. What's the antiderivative of cosine? Positive sine. So I get negative 4 over 3 sine of what's u? Square root of x plus constant. They are like little puzzles. So see how u is the root of x? du means the derivative of u. So what's the derivative of the square root of x? The derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 roots of x dx. Better? The next one we actually can't figure out unless we get rid of the squared. I forget to change the problem every single year. Looks like a super challenging problem. But fortunately, we know substitution, okay? And so right away, you look inside the parentheses. You're like, well, I want you to be 4 plus tangent of x. Well, before we do that, let's just think ahead. If you were to take the derivative of 4 plus tangent, what's the derivative of 4? 0. What's the derivative of tangent? So do you come up with something else? Yeah. So that for that reason, it's a really good choice. So u is going to be 4 plus tangent of x. And du is equal to, as you guys said, secant squared of x dx. That, and that's what makes it really difficult, that if you do the derivative of tangent squared, what you end up with is u squared tangent of x, right, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared of x, and deriv uh, the derivative of u squared is 2u, so you get 2 secant squared times tangent. That's the derivative. And so if that was a square, that would make the problem ridiculously difficult for us. All right, I have the integral. What do I get rid of 4 plus tangent of x with? u cubed. What do I get rid of secant squared dx with? Hey, that was sweet, huh? What's the answer of u cubed? Your fourth over four plus c. So I replace u with four plus tangent. My guess. The fourth power over four plus constant. Yay! That's cool. I like that gecko. What's that? Yeah. How about this one? What's uh what's u? Minus x squared. What's du? Negative two x dx. And I like that because I come up with the x. The x is what was causing the problem for me in the first place. I don't have a negative 2x dx. I have a positive 3x dx. So what should I do? We're going to leave it. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Multiply by negative 3 halves. Negative 3 over 2 du is equal to 3x dx. Nicely played, Mr. Dulitzer. Grace's question, excellent question. We left the square root thing alone. Watch what happens. I get rid of the 3x dx with negative 3 over 2 du. So those are gone, right? So what remains? 1 over the square root of u, correct? Or u to the negative 1 half power? What's the antiderivative of u to the negative one half?
u to the one half divided by a half, right? So multiply by two. The antiderivative u to the negative one half is u to the one half over one half. If you divide by one half, it's the same as multiplying by two. The two is cancel. I get negative three times the square root of what? Plus c. Doing well. We got three more to go. What is u in number six? What is du? Shoot, I don't have a 2x plus 1. Multiply by 2. So I have 2 du is equal to 4x plus 2 dx. All right, so I've got my 2, got my integral, I've got my du. So that, that gets rid of that stuff. What do I have left? U to the negative third. What is the antiderivative of u to the negative third? u to the negative 2 over negative 2. So 2 times u to the negative 2 over 2 plus c. You got to write down more steps, folks. Write, write down more steps. What's going to happen? Oh, I got a negative, negative, negative. What's going to happen? 2 cancel. And so I get negative 1 over u squared, or x squared plus x minus 1, y squared plus c. Number 7 is awesome. It teaches us. Something is unique in this problem compared to all the others. It's got e to the x. What is missing in this problem compared to all the others? Yeah, there's really no parenthesis. You're like, well, one of the previous ones did have parentheses, but it kind of did add a square root sign, right? So we got to think to that idea. We got to choose u to be something so that when we take the derivative of it, we get something else. So let's suppose. Suppose u was e to the x. What's the derivative of e to the x? So you get that, but do you get the plus 1? No. Suppose u was e to the x plus 1. What's the derivative of e to the x plus 1? Do I come up with that? See how that's the better choice? u is equal to e to the x plus 1. So du is e to the x dx. I would, yeah, definitely not. I wish I could say always. I just can't do that. Practice. You'll get it. All right. So I have the du. And what do I have left? u to the negative 1. 1 over u or u to the negative 1. So if I increase it by 1, I get u to the 0 over 0. So I so I've got one over u, right? Don't fail me, folks. You know the answer. It's sitting in your brain. Natural log. Thank you, folks. Do you remember what's the derivative of natural log of x? One over x. So therefore, what's the antiderivative of one over x? The natural log of x. So what's the antiderivative of the 1 over u? Natural log of u, and u is e to the x plus 1 plus a constant. Oh, no, Mr. Gantz, you make us remember our logarithms? Yes.
What's the derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x. So what's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Natural log of x. So therefore, the antiderivative of 1 over u is natural log of u. Last example, what are we missing in this one? Parentheses again, aren't we? Kind of. Kind of not, maybe. Who knows? Remember my advice. When you take the derivative of something, you want to come up with something else. Suppose that we say that we choose u to be cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. So we got the sine, but we don't have the squared part, do we? What's the derivative of sine? Cosine. And we come up with exactly what we want there, right? So therefore, u is going to be sine of x. So what is du? Cosine of x dx. I don't have a cosine of x. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I have four cosine of x dx, don't I? So what do I have to do? So I have four du is equal to four cosine of x dx. We'll check out the exponent in just a second. So I have the 4, I have the integral, I have the du. And what does that get rid of? What 4 integral du, what does that get rid of? Gets rid of the 4, gets rid of the cosine, gets rid of the dx, gets rid of the integral. So what's the only thing left? u squared. That's what happened to the squared. See it now? What's the antiderivative of u squared? Yeah, so I end up with 4u cubed over 3 plus c. And what is u? Sine of x. So 4 sine cubed of x over 3 plus a constant. That is awesome. If you wrote it as 4 times sine of x, quantity cubed over 3, that's fine. But you have to make sure you put the parentheses in the right spot. Otherwise, it would be wrong. Okay. You're ready to do your assignment. We've got a few problems done already. We did about 4 in class. You can't do the whole thing yet. You're not ready for it. But what you can do is take it all the way up to... I would say you could handle all the way up to about problem 20. Actually, you could handle up to problem 26. You go to town. Tomorrow I'll cover some more difficult ones. It'll be a really fun day. Good work.